when I got involved in Jason Takes Manhattan, which was Friday the 13th, part eight, it was conceivably going to be the last in the series. Nobody knew, but I felt the responsibility to make this movie be the bookend. And it's a daunting kind of assignment to have, to, to come up with something that, that lives up to all the ones that have come before. Since I had played Jason in part seven, I did not have it in my contract to play the part if there was another movie. I heard through the grapevine that they were talking to somebody up in Vancouver uh, about playing Jason, I, and I thought, wait a minute, uh, you know, at least give me a chance. So I called up the producers, and and they actually didn't think I had any interest in it, which was very amazing to me because I love playing the character. And with my uh, lobbying to play the character again, it worked, and uh, we shot the movie in Vancouver. And I was very happy to have that mask back on. With, with Jason Takes Manhattan, we very specifically changed the title of the movie during shooting so nobody would even know that's what we were filming. Because if people knew that Jason was walking down their street, everybody would come out and would want to touch him, get an autograph, or maybe get beaten by him. I don't know. I was going up there to shoot the working title. I wasn't going to shoot a Friday the 13th. It was like um, Burial at Sea, I think was one. Ashes to Ashes was another one. And uh, it was an actress in the movie um, who met me in like the little lounge just before you board or whatever. It was Kelly Who. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I can't believe I'm shooting a Friday the 13th. And I'm like, oh, well, we must not be in the same movie. I'm going to shoot Ashes to Ashes. You get me in the lake and you're not gonna get me now. I think I really learned how to be an action star on that film. It was just being thrown out into a situation and you had to, within days, figure out how to survive on that set. Being hosed down, having people throwing mud at your hair, climbing down the side of a ship, pretending you're drowning. I don't understand what's happening to me. They called me and offered me the role and said there is another actor that's that we had to let go, and he had been portraying this character for probably two weeks at that point. They were two weeks into shooting. So yeah, it was it was kind of strange, but it was, uh, it was a great cast and, and a great group of people, so it, they made it easy. Well, once again with uh, part eight, again, I had a director that uh, I enjoyed working with and again was secure enough in his own abilities that he would listen to my suggestions. I relied on him for a lot of things. And okay, Kane, would you know, would Jason do this? Would he do that? And I have an idea, and he'd say, well, let's tweak it a little bit this way, or how about that? I thought he was a, a pussycat until he put on that face mask. And then he scared the hell out of me. He was this, just this happy-go-lucky, you know, cool guy outside of work. Man, you get on the set. And when it was time for him to do his thing, Jason took over. It was, a tri it was kind of trippy, it was kind of freaky. Working with Jensen and Scott was pretty fun because uh, uh, I messed with them a little bit uh, off the set. I, you know, I'd, I would know that Jensen was looking at me so I'd do something weird like, you know, slamming my head against the wall or something like that. It was just fun. I, I entertained myself with it, even though maybe some people don't like it sometimes, but I don't really care. I don't think I was ever scared of Kane Hodder in the mask. I was scared of the dog we were shooting with because it's four o'clock in the morning and you're doing take 20 and you're like, just sit down, sit on the bed. I need to get some sleep. Every scene I had with that dog, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna be here till six in the morning. So we were on location um, at the university in British Columbia where we had water tanks uh, for the underwater scenes set up. I shot underwater sequences of young Jason, who was played by Tim Merkovich, film editor's son, by the way. And we shot him and we put a piece of glass in and had him come up and tap the glass like it was the porthole. I remember the first time I went down, went under, came up and, you know, was banging on the glass. People started panicking because, you know, they thought I was down there too long and they were pointing me away. So uh, finally I come up and they're like, what, are you okay? People were really worried, and I'm like, oh, that was fun, let's, let's go again. So I remember it was really cold. The slime that they stick on me was 20 degrees. It was, it was freezing, skimpy shorts, frozen slime, uh, two and a half hours of makeup. You know, it was really exciting to, to miss school for two months to go be in a movie. 
I was the coolest kid in fourth grade for, for a couple of months, and you know, it was a good experience. To some degree, with the actors, we also wanted to keep them a little, you know, on the edge. What's going to happen to me, and how is it going to be done? And even in the script, it will say how they die, but it, maybe there'll be a few little specifics left out. There were a lot of instances in the movie where we didn't want to reveal what was going to happen to them. And they would ask, what's going to happen? And I'd give them a little tease here and a little tease the next day. It was so funny because when somebody was going to get killed, you'd see on the shooting schedule and, and you know, it'd be like, hey, man, are you working tomorrow? Hey, come by and watch me get killed. And you know what I mean? <laughs> the spear gun. That was one of the scariest moments I've ever had on film for real because, well, first of all, you have the whole production and time and money and I'm uh, they put me up against the, the fake wall of the boat and I would just remember them specifically going okay we have one shot at this and if you screw it up it's gonna be a long time we have to rebuild the wall because they were shooting an actual spear gun the look on my face when they fire the spear gun at me is absolute real sheer terror <laughs> so it worked back then in 1989 the MPAA was really really strict about getting an R rating for instance, the real Jason gets on board and he grabs a spear gun and shoves it into this guy's chest in a big hole. You see it in, in, in my first cut. That thing goes all the way in and he yanks it out and there's blood and guts and it's all over the place. And again, they said, that's got to go out of the movie. Get rid of it. Originally, I, the part called for me to, to jump into the water. It all takes place on a boat, and I was going to get away and, I guess, do the obvious thing, which is try and escape by jumping off the boat. But it was freezing, if I can recall, and they decided that the production couldn't afford a stunt double, so that's when they came up with, oh, we'll just kill her on the boat. The actual spear going into my gut was a, a fake body double that I didn't get to see until I saw the movie. She has bigger boobs than I do. <laughs> The scene where Charlene comes out of the shower naked and I punch through the door, grab her by her head and throw her into the mirror. There's been rumors that, that Rob stripped down to make her more comfortable, the actress. Despite the fact that there was you know, sort of nudity involved, um, I was actually really excited to do that scene because it really gave me an opportunity as an actress to explore that, which I, which I really wanted to do. Now there was the nudity part, which I was quite uncomfortable with. Charlene, who's the sweetest girl and, and had never done any nudity or anything like that in the movie, or any movie, came to me and she says, you know, Rob, I'm really concerned about, I, I don't, you know, I don't want to, you know, I'm not sure about my body and do I look attractive? And, and I, I said, you, you know, A, you're gorgeous. Don't worry about that. And B, we're shooting you in the shower with this translucent shower curtain and we're only getting just these glimpses. We're not really seeing anything. Rob Hedden, the director, was amazing, and he was so kind, and he stripped down at the same time as me. I took off all my clothes, I got in the shower, got the shower going, I was going, oh, doing all these things. The crew is laughing, everybody's like, oh my god, the guy took his clothes off. And, um, and it actually made it really fun, and it gave me a chance. I, I sort of lost all my inhibitions and went for it. She was laughing so hard, she says, if he, if he can do it, I can do it. And she got in the shower and did it. Well, what I didn't know was that my camera crew decided to film it. And they sent the dailies back to Paramount, so the executives get in the screening room to watch that day's dailies, and here's the director prancing around naked on the set, get taking a shower, and they're like, what the heck is going on with that movie, you know? There's one shot I did with Charlene that's the aftermath of that, and you see her laying naked on the floor with about a two dozen glass shards stabbed in her back, blood everywhere and all that. We put that in the movie, the MPA says, get rid of it, it's out of the movie, can't, can't do that. When we were getting ready to um, show this picture to the MPAA, there just seemed to be a general feeling that it's gonna come back with an X. It was a little more elaborate when we started and we just kept shaving and shaving and shaving. A lot of the kills were cut down again, maybe not quite as drastically as part seven, but uh, still cut down again. Actually, Friday the 13th part eight, is tame compared to any R-rated movie today. Take your best shot. The boxing sequence, for me, was uh, probably my favorite kill in part eight. My original intention was to have Julius and Jason duke it out in Madison Square Garden in the extended version of the movie, the movie that was going to spend over half the movie in Manhattan. But I couldn't give up that scene. There had to be 
the boxing match between Julius and Jason. Kane and I, we really just went for it. He had pads on. And, you know, to make it real, you just really have to sell it. There was a double for VC. The boxer did some of the wider shots, punching me. And to be honest with you, the boxer, I guess being more skilled with pulling his punches, didn't hit me as hard as VC did. VC hit me hard, and it was 66 punches or something for the sequence. And, you know, you do numerous takes of that, you're getting the shit beat out of you. That swollen, swollen uh, knuckles, that wasn't fake. Pretty much what you see on there is what was going down. Brian England, the DP, loved this because I said, I want to get a decapicam shot. And he goes, what? A shot from the decapitated head's point of view. And that was one of the most fun things, to take a camera and throw it off a roof and let it spin around before his head goes into the dumpster. And I think the head made it to various places on the set. You know, at, at random times, you'd open something, and there would be VC's head. <laughs> this is pretty much the, um, the result of all my troubles. <laughs> Jason takes Manhattan. This is it right here, and um, here we are. <laughs> I'm bringing you please. My demise. That was a repellent moment. It was this huge, disgusting barrel of oil or refuse, or vomitous material, liquid material, with some rats in it. I just jammed his head in head first into this thick methicil slime shit. And that couldn't have been easy being upside down in that stuff. It's not like being in water. You come out of it, and it's still on your face. You still can't breathe for a while, so. Absolutely revolting, and I give him Four medals for that. <laughs> I think part eight was probably easier. I might have felt a little more like part of the gang by then, you know? I think, I think I'd, like I said, done probably maybe 30 episodes by then of the TV series. So I had a great rapport with Frank, uh, Barbara Sachs, and people like that. So I, I think that was a, by, by no means easy. It was an enormous amount of work in a very short amount of time. But I remember feeling very uh, uh, enthused and I think I remember I had to break an electric guitar. So I think we smashed a guitar for actually like, really like, like the Who would do uh, in the studio uh, under controlled circumstances. But we had to do that. I had to get like a $90, you know, uh, horrible electric guitar and just smash it to get that sound. It was the first time we'd had a song. It was a very 80s sort of uh, uh, rock song. And I had written some lyrics about, you know, just basically people on the street and, you know, sort of dark imagery. And we called the song The Darkest Side of the Night. The most amazing thing that ever happened to me playing Jason out of any of the four movies I did happened to be in Jason Takes Manhattan. And it was when we were shooting in Times Square, being on the traffic island in full costume with all the neon, with literally hundreds of people on either side watching behind barricades. I heard people yelling and everything, and I just stood there and stared straight ahead and then just did the old turn and people just went crazy. It was unbelievable. I've talked to fans a lot about why part eight wasn't as well received. And I think just a lot of people in their mind pictured the whole movie being in New York. So they went into it expecting one thing and not getting it. It's sort of misleading, you know, because it says, you know, Jason takes Manhattan, but about 15 minutes of it takes place in Manhattan, and the rest is on some half-assed boat, you know, in outside of Vancouver in really bad weather, and it looks about as luxurious as, like, Popeye's, you know, a uh, uh, little skiff or something, you know, so. I think it would have been great if, if we had had a few more scenes shot there. It would have been so cool if we could have gone through the Met and gone past the dinosaur exhibit or something like that. Can you imagine a shot of Jason running past a brontosaurus in the Met? It's genius. I don't know why they didn't do it. The other thing that we did that is very it's controversial with fans and non-fans is, is the ending of the movie. And I hear about this all the time. I had asked them, the brain trust of all the Friday movies, can I kill Jason in this movie? Can I make this be the very last Friday the 13th movie? And they said, sure, do whatever you want, because they're going to bring it back if they want to anyway. If you see him as an adult, dead, floating at the bottom of anything, 
it's like, okay, well, we've seen that. We know he's going to come back in the next movie. So what can we do that's different? And, and the idea said, well, what if he, when he really, really dies, he reverts back to that young boy he was when he originally drowned back in Sean Cunningham's movie in the first one. Um, so there was a scene that, that ended up being deleted uh, that involved me popping out of a skull of Jason. They dumped thousands of gallons of water out from the head down through the mouth. And I had to pop up a little hole where the throat would be and somehow crawl out of the water, out of the teeth, out of the mouth. And, uh, it was troubling to cut something like this because I'm watching my son look like he's drowning through the whole thing. And uh, ultimately, it just never worked. So that's why at the end of the movie, he gets hit with toxic waste. He goes down, he's bubbling. You're waiting to see who knows what when the, when the toxic waste is going. Is it going to be a skeleton? Is it going to be Big Jason with just all rotted away? What's it going to be? And, and again, let's do a twist here. Let's do a surprise. And so it's kind of like somebody who's in purgatory. When they finally die, they finally get to go off to the hereafter. And that's, that's what we wanted to do with him. I do want to clear up one thing that's always been said about me hating the end of part eight. I never hated the end of it. Uh, I just thought maybe we could have done something better. But as far as hating it, I never hated it. There are only a few, there are only a, hand, a handful of those franchises that are, are in modern day terms. And Jason is, you know, arguably right up there. People are really attached to these movies. It's, it's, I mean, it's amazing, and it's, and, it's, and it's so cool to be part of that. It's cool to be part of something that has such a dedicated following. They, the attention to detail that the fans have, it's really to be admired, man. They just, they just dig it. The nuances of every single thing, they are like totally up on it. I mean, no, I don't think there's anyone who doesn't go camping or go stay in a cabin by a lake you know, where the thought doesn't cross their mind at least once. Man, what, what if, what if there's some, some crazy psycho killer out here? To be a part of that, nobody will ever be able to take that away from me, and I'm just, I can't believe that I got to do it. Thrilled that I got to be involved in it.